a viveritas summum. Considering my subject for today, I figured it was only fitting that I do the intro in Latin, though I admit I was torn between that and Hebrew. But as I'm addressing this primarily to the Christian conservative side of the political spectrum, there wasn't really any choice to be made there at all. A fair warning up front, this is almost certainly going to be another Warhead-style video, similar to my last one comparing Christianity to communism, linked below for reasons I'll get into shortly. Considering that was my most controversial video to date based on the like-dislike ratio, I'll try my best to keep this one as secular as possible. However, given the title's inherently religious connotations, there is inevitably going to be some spiritual overlap, so consider yourself warned. That being said, let us logically dissect why no one and nothing has intrinsic value and why everyone's afraid to admit it. But first and foremost, we must cover our bases. What does it mean to have intrinsic value? Well, according to the dictionary, intrinsic means belonging to a thing by its very nature. Ergo, intrinsic value is value a thing has simply by existing as itself. So then, what is value? Again, the dictionary describes it as the relative worth, merit, or importance of a thing. The hazard in openly applying this definition to people is that the worth or importance of anything, human or otherwise, as far as our human conception of the term is concerned, is entirely dictated by its utility, that is, its function or potential as a tool to further the aims of the observer. In essence, value is not only contingent, that is, dependent on reliable factors, but is also relative. I'm sure you've all heard the phrase, one man's trash is another man's treasure. Therefore, the only way for this popular idea of the immutable, inalienable, inbuilt value of a human life is only logically possible if your worth is measured by something outside of your work merits, i.e., if you're valuable not because of what you do, but because of who you are as a person. The problem with this proposal is that nobody outside of you has a use for your personality. I can't spend it, eat it, sleep on it, or build things with it. For that, I need your tangible abilities. Your talents, your skills, your energy, your knowledge, etc. This is why no one pays you just to exist. As far as anyone outside of you yourself is concerned, you are either a tool, an obstacle, or a burden on their own ambitions. Notice, there is no fourth special little snowflake category. At least, not unless you're prepared to believe in magic. See my video, Why Your Religion Won't Save Your Culture, for more on that. Now, you might be thinking something along the lines of, well, Jesus loves me because I'm made in his image. But unless he also signs your paychecks, that's probably not the best model to base our economic or political policies on. And herein lies the greatest irony of this whole ordeal, that the only people still stupid enough to genuinely believe in the intrinsic value of a human life are those who most vehemently disavow the supernatural. The same ones who openly hate all forms of meaningful diversity and meritocratic discretion, who claim, without merit, moral supremacy for their thoughtless, vapid conflation of deference with truth, equity with fairness, and cynical Machiavellianism with real justice. And then, on the other hand, those who most vocally profess favor of capitalistic ideals like performance-based compensation will spin right around and proselytize a value system directly antithetical to it. And by the way, don't think women are excused from this formula. For while they do have the bulk of their value front-loaded, it only goes so far as they are the incubators of the next generation. In other words, it's her eggs and womb that are valuable, not her. So once that utility is spent, they are just as disposable as the rest of us, no matter what their sign is or what education they have. And unlike the men, they can't rely as much on elbow grease or experience to compensate, a hard lesson many older women are starting to learn the hard way. But anyhow, that's enough out of me for one day. Hopefully you found this little lecture informative and or thought-provoking. Until next we meet, sit semper honestus.